Hello. We're still waiting for some other participants joining the call. Yes, hello, welcome everyone, exactly from my side too. Just bear with us uh, another few seconds because I think there are still some people joining us. There should come some more. Just in case if you wonder where I look at it, just look at the number of participants. So I see that Barbara and Gregor are on board. Welcome to you. I think you've already you already were in some sessions with us, so I'm happy that you and welcome you again in our reading session. So probably we're just going to start because it's already 31. I hope there will be some people joining us. Would be a pity though, but actually the, the, the Zoom call is, or the Zoom meeting, webinar, whatever is recorded. So if ever you wish, to get the link to the recording, just give us a shout. Okay, I think we'll just give you the start, Jester. Jester, where are you? Oh, 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 darling, darling, what, what's up, what's up? I was just having a good cup of tea. How are you? Um, I'm pretty fine. You look gorgeous, oh, well, Jester. You look you. absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you, my darling. You know, I was just saying to the Queen yesterday, you know, the Queen, the Queen Longoria, she's a very good friend of mine. And you know, she has that special teacup that has a quite cute little tiny little pink flower, but it broke the other day. It was just a disaster, a disaster. You know how the Queen is about her teacup. And you know who did it? No, who did that it? Dundering old Bobby. Bobby, he should, ne should never have been there, that Bobby. You know, Bobby, and he also wears pink pants when he plays golf. It's just, it's just not okay. I mean, what is going on with Bobby when he's doing these types of things? And Queen Logori said to me, she said to me there, Lady Greta, she said, if Bobby wears pink pants when he's golfing with Queen Longoria again, she's never going to allow him to drink out of her cup with flowers. Never, never, never. It's just not going to be on. So she's going to give him a teacup, a teacup with blue pants. So he understands that he needs to wear blue pants in the golf course. Now, I don't understand what the problem is with her uh, with pink pants. I think they're quite respectable pink pants. Just a very strange thing very strange thing and then she was going on and on the queen queen langoria you know, you know, we, we love her a bit queen langoria oh my goodness gracious me she's all upset about the reindeer on her lawn the reindeer on her lawn she you know they came all the way down from finland those reindeer and they left the bells on the lawn because you know the reindeer in finland they have bells on their horns oh it's just yes and then they wander all over the lawn leaving bells everywhere oh Poor, poor, poor Queen Longoria. Are you really sure that the radiators are crossing the ocean? Of course they fly. Oh, oh right. right. Oh, yeah. Just completely forgot oh, about that. Yeah. Next time we're with the Queen, you're getting a cup with blue pants on it, too. Oh, goodness gracious me. Oh, yes. So the Queen was going on about the reindeer in her lawn, leaving the bells. And then she reminded me, oh, my goodness gracious me, that her roses were being eaten by all the rabbits. 
the rabbits, what are rabbits doing eating roses? They're supposed to eat the lettuce. And they should be eating the, le the, re the lettuce in Prince Gulliver's garden, not the roses in Queen Longoria's garden. What? I mean, that's just ridiculous. It is really just, just not on. Yeah. Okay, but let's um, stop that gossiping, Chester. You're always the same, you know. You're always so typical in gossiping. But you do you know me. I'm not one for gossip, no. Just only on the special occasion. Just, you know, and just like I don't drink, just a tipple at Christmas time. No, no, I'm not one for the gossip. Oh, I was just telling okay. you what the Queen told me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that sure, but I will discuss this with you right now. Mm -hmm. So, so what are we doing today, Lady Greta? Do you have, are we having a tea um, party? Is that what we're here for, a tea party? Well, actually, um, we're just, well, actually, I'm just surrounded by um, everyone here in, in this train who's actually having some tea, but um, obviously we're having a reading. We've have invited everyone for a quick reading through, um, through a reader of ours. Oh, right, wonderful, right. So what book are we reading today? I've got a whole plethora of books. You know, yeah, I'll just grab one out of the shelves and then you just tell me. But please, not out loud. You see, oh, I should just. They have to find that. All right. To find out. Oh, there we go. Let me see. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, what shall we read? So, oh, I found one right over here. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so we shall start on the page. Shall I start then? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's a good idea for once. You start, yeah? But do you know what book I've chosen there, Lady Rebecca? Um, No, no. Oh, yeah, you will have to tell me. I will have to see whether I have the correct book in front of me. Okie dokie, so I shall tell you. Because, I, you know, of course, I have the whole pile of all the readers that we have available within Pearson. Oh, so. yes, there's about 49 gazillion. Yeah, uh, something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, we'll tell you Maybe that. four less. Four less, yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. Well, I'll whisper it in your ear. Where's your ear, lady? Here's my ear. Oh, okay. And there we go. Did you get that? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Give it again. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me just find that one. Um, where is it? Where is it? I've just had that one because I thought maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah. Here it is. Just lying in front of me. How oh. come? Yeah, what a coincidence. I have it open. Strange things the trains have these days in 1983. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you want to give it a go? Okay, there we go. So we're starting today. You know, we'll start today on page two. Very interesting page two. All right. So chapter one. Nobody noticed when the lights went dim for a second. Start the clock, said a voice, but nobody heard. The clock started counting. 60 seconds, 65, 64. A train was traveling at high speed, but this was no ordinary train. It was traveling through space, and it was the Orient Express. Oh, ooh, it's just, oh, the Orient Express. Ooh. The King of Trains. Many years ago, the Orient Express was Europe's favorite train, Lady Greta. I bet you didn't know that, but Queen Mongolia told me all about it. And the favorite train, the Orient Express, would take rich people from Paris to Istanbul. Istanbul is not Constantinople. No longer, no. No longer. This wasn't the real Orient Express, of course. But it was rather a perfect copy. Inside the train, the passengers were all in the dining carriage. Oh, look, how cumbersome. Yeah. Everybody in the same room. Oh, just oh, can't be bothered. They were enjoying a fine evening meal, expensive wine. I like my Barolos, 
And you, Lady Greta? I prefer Primitivo. Primitivo, oh, but of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> wink, wink. But we're both obviously very fond of Italian wine. Though. Oh, yes, definitely. So they had their expensive wine, Barolos and Primitivos, and a view of the stars <gasps> while they passed through <gasps> the universe. It was a very special trip, calling at a different planet every few days. Well, would me. Ah, the trains were I live. They just go to Zug and to Kronenberg and they turn sometimes down to Kiaspo, but never off to another planet. Oh, quite jealous of this particular train I am. I dare say I am. Every moon was dressed for dinner. Dinner in 1925. Oh, just a banner year that year. Yeah, Charleston, the fashion back then. Ooh. Everyone was basically partying. Yes, it was a great flapper years. The men wore black dinner suits and the women wore beautiful, beautiful dresses. A waitress walked between the tables carrying bowls of soup. I bet she's using those beautiful pink flower bowls from Queen Longoria. I bet she is. I do dare say myself. I wouldn't expect something else, to be honest. At one end of the dining car, an old lady sat in a wheelchair opposite a much younger woman. Neither woman smiled when the waitress put down their soup. Whew, bit of an attitude they have. Then the old lady looked up. She did, and suddenly her face changed. Oh. 50, 49, oh. 48. Maisie, Maisie, what's up with you? Nothing Is in there particular. some sort of silly party this evening, Maisie? She asked, looking towards the other end of the car in surprise, over there. Well, I don't think so, said Maisie Pitt, the younger woman. Why do you ask, Mama? Maisie, look at that person at the end of the dining car, said the old lady. He's dressed as a mummy. Look at him, using all that, that, that loo roll. He's wearing loo rolls, he is. He's dressed as a mummy. Do you not see it, Maisie? The mummy was very, very, very tall. It looked straight at the old lady while it moved slowly down the car towards her. Dirty old bandages covered its body with bits hanging from its arms and legs. It had black holes in place of eyes and its mouth was full of broken teeth. 14, 39, 38. The old lady waved her hand at the head waiter, keeping her eyes on the mummy. Oh, you, you, she called angrily to the waiter. Throw that, that man, that rural covered thing that out of this dining car. It's not amusing. The mummy pulled one of its feet along the floor as it came closer and closer. Um, which man, madam? The head waiter said quietly and politely. He looked along the empty space between the tables over there. To the end of the car, he couldn't see a man or a mummy. He couldn't see the mummy, Lady Greta. Whew. Waiters these days, or back in those days, also. Which man? Repeated the old woman, screaming. Which man? That man over there. 30, 29, 28. That man, that man, she cried. They're dressed as a mummy. Can't you see him? She turned to the young woman. Maisie, Maisie, tell him. The old, the old excuse me. Sorry, okay. 
The old lady wasn't angry now. She was afraid. Other passengers turned to look at her white, white face and frightened eyes. Mama, said the younger woman looking around. There's nobody here. 20, 20, 19, 18. Don't you write to me, girl, said the old lady. Then she shook her finger. Look, I've got a mummy finger in my hand. She shook her finger at the mummy and said, stop it, stop it immediately. Just to the other passengers, she seemed to be shaking her finger at the empty air. 10. Nine, eight. The mummy was very close to the old lady now, but only she could see it. It moved its ugly head towards her with its broken teeth and bad smell. <sighs> oh, 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 she, it, I'm sure it smells like Bobby. You know, the man on the golf course. No. With the pink trousers, yeah. Yes, yes. She tried to disappear into a wheelchair. <sighs> You're not well, Mama, said the younger woman. Shall I get you a medicine? Would you like to go back to your room? Oh, just get it off me, get, get, get it off me. Look, the mummy hands, get, get it off me, cried the old lady. Three, two, one. The mummy reached its hands out and pressed them hard against the old lady's head and neck. She shut her eyes tight. She fell back into her seat and zabu. Zero. The younger woman jumped up and screamed. The other passengers stood up too. They wanted to see what was happening. <gasps> Is there a doctor on the train? Cried the young woman. We need a doctor. Further along the train, there was a sudden strange noise and a bright, 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 bright light. A blue police box arrived from nowhere. The door of the box opened and a man stepped out. He was followed by a young woman. They were dressed like the other passengers in clothes from the 1920s. The box wasn't a police box. It was the TARDIS. Oh, wow. It was a machine that could travel through time and space. The man wasn't a man. He was a time lord from the planet Glyphry. He was called the doctor. The young woman was really a young, young woman from Earth. Her name was Clara Oswald. Back on Earth, she was an English teacher. I was an English teacher once, Lady Greta. I taught for a long time. I taught in Greece. I taught the noble language of the kings and queens of England to all the people in Greece. Yeah, but you were not teaching on Gallifrey, right? How dare you remind me that I was only one planet teacher. I could have been a multi-universal teacher if I'd wanted to. But then, you know, I met Bobby. Okay. Anyway, so Clara Oswald, back on Earth, she was an English teacher with a boyfriend called oh, Danny Pink. He won't be allowed on the golf course either. Clara was also the doctor's companion on his adventures in space. Our last journey together, Clara, said the doctor. And this was the last of those adventures. Clara was angry with the doctor and she wanted to stay on earth now with Danny. This trip was a surprise gift from the doctor to say goodbye. She looked around puzzled. This wasn't a beautiful planet full of strange aliens. It was a small dark room full of suitcases. Er, uh, um, Wonderful, she said, not meaning it, but doctor, where are we? Why has the TARDIS brought us here? This carriage, Clara, is for the suitcases, said the doctor. 
It's not very wonderful, but thank you for saying so. He took Clara to the door next door, and there the next carriage had a wide open space. And when he opened that door to that carriage, he said, this is the wonderful part, Clara. Welcome to the Orient Express. Oh. Oh. End of chapter one, Jester. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Chapter one, oh my gosh. Well, oh now. So, Actually, I'd love to continue with chapter two, can we? I think we could read at least one page of chapter two. Would we can write that? Shall we give a sneak peek to the a people? Sneak. I think we should. Let's go. Should you start or should I start? Okay, I'll just write, um, read that page six then. Very good, wonderful, Lady Greta. Off chapter two, oh. chapter two, the sad smile. The door opened into the train's bar where guests were enjoying a drink after dinner. Oh, there's a bit of there juicy a, here for me. Exactly. There was a singer and some passengers were dancing. Ooh. Others were sitting and talking and watching the view of the universe through the train's windows. Life continued as usual. The death of the old lady, well, that was sad, of course, but old ladies have to die sometime, yeah. And this was a special holiday on a special train. The doctor and Clara stepped into the bar. It's it almost exactly like the first Orient Express, said the doctor, but it's a little bigger and it's in space and it doesn't really need its wheels. It's flying, as you can see. The doctor was talking, but Clara didn't seem to be listening. Not <coughs> she looked at her face. Was she smiling? <coughs> doing it again, Clara, he said. <coughs> doing what, she asked. That smile, said the doctor. It's the sad, sad smile. Hmm, it's a smile, but you're sad. I don't understand it. It's two opposite feelings at the same time. I always like that, Lady Greta, with two opposite feelings at the same time. I'm having about 10 opposite feelings just right now, now that I know the old lady died. I always think you're malfunctioning. Oh, Clara's malfunctioning. I'm, I'm sorry, said Clara. I thought this was a good last journey for us, said the doctor. Yeah, shall we give it another two, couple of lines? Yes, we shall, I think we shall. Yes, it is, said Clara. You've chosen a good one. She smiled again and took the doctor's arm. They walked to a table and looked out at the stars. Dear guests, said a voice. It was the train's computer. Please look through the window on the right of the train. You can see the Magellan black hole. Isn't it beautiful? Whenever I'm on the right side of the train, all I can see is Art Goldau. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, I remember when there were beautiful planets here, said the doctor. That big black hole has eaten them all now. He looked at Clara. She wasn't listening. There's that smile again, he said. How do you do that? Oh, goodness gracious me. I think that's where we're going to have to stop, Lady Grace. Yeah, yeah, I think we're not allowed to, to read any further. So no. has anyone an idea of, of which book we were reading? You may want to um, put everything into the chat. Have a little chat into the chat and let us know if you think you can figure out what book we were reading. Uh, and I shall tell you some more stories about Bobby and Queen Longoria. Queen Longoria. See, she was out in the airfield the other day, you know, with uh, Orville Wright and Wilbur Wright. And she was giving them ideas on how she could, you know, to get that plane off the ground. Oops. Uh, do we have anybody writing any news in there about what book we've been reading? I don't see any. Any ideas? No ideas. Goodness gracious me. Well, 
I think the only thing to do then. We could actually give them a hint, maybe. Could we? I mean, if I, I was at their place, I would go onto our website, pearson.ch, yeah. and look, you know, for the readers of level three. Very, very good. So I think with that little tip, if you have any idea what it might be after you have a little look at our website, then you can give us an email and then we can tell you if you're right or wrong and then we can share a sample book with you. Yeah. How does that one sound for you, Lady Greta? Yeah, that sounds absolutely awesome. Very I mean, you can also talk. Just show yourself if you like. Very good. All right, so this is the end of our reading sessions this week, and it was all very short notice. We hope you enjoyed them as much as we've enjoyed doing them for you. We will be doing this again with a lot more promotion in autumn and Christmas time, and we will have adult readings and readings for children, and we're going to have special for Christmas and autumn readings. So we want to thank you all for coming to our sessions and have a lovely afternoon and enjoy the football if you're watching the football. <laughs> if you're not watching the football, enjoy your afternoon and your drinks footballs tomorrow, I guess, right, Lady Greta? Yeah, I think something like that, yeah. Yeah, Switzerland is playing on, on um, oh, Switzerland's still in. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised as well. <laughs> I hope like, Switzerland's still here. Oh, were, were they invited to stay or did they actually? <laughs> well, they're just having a lot of luck. Well, oh, never well mind. Done. <laughs> well done. I hope they will cope fine with France. Oh, they're playing with France. Yeah, against, not oh, with. Right. Oh, wait, of course. <laughs> I think, when is their rehearsal? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that you know yeah. that off-putting rule that they have or whatever it's called <laughs> yeah i'd like to thank all of you as well to have joined us again because the ones that are in the call or at least two of them have i think uh, joined us for every or almost every session that we had this week it was a pleasure we loved it when we actually rehearsed you know just Lafol and myself we loved it a lot and uh, this is how we think you could actually also read through one of our Pearson readers. So thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions, just thank give you, us Gregory. a shout. And um, yeah, maybe we'll see you again in autumn or just before Christmas for another reading. That'll be just great. Thank you, everyone. Yes, to the fall says, over and out to all of you. Bye. Have a good weekend. <laughs>